Welcome to our series on how public sector and critical infrastructure leaders can better detect and respond to cyber threats by taking new approaches to security operations. As cyber attacks increase in number and severity. It's important not only to stay up to date on the latest technology solutions, but also the best operating practices. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and joining us to talk about that today and the benefits of ensuring security operations are the foundation of an effective security posture are Chris Fielder, Field Chief Technology Officer at Arctic Wolf Networks, and Kevin Gowan, Chief Information Security Officer at Cinevis. Uh, Chris and Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. And Chris, I'd like to start with you. Um, Effective security operations really depend on, uh, as some people would say, the harmonious use of people, tools, and processes, right? Uh, not only to defend against attacks, but to ensure that the overall resiliency of an organization is kept intact. So um, as public and private sector organizations continue to modernize their IT systems uh, and their infrastructure, how, how do you believe that most organizations would currently characterize the focus of their security operations themselves and what should they be thinking about? Yeah, that's a great question. So we've actually done some research into this recently uh, and published some reports on this. What we found when we talked to a, a large uh, swath of the industry that was out there was that about 60% of organizations that we have seen actually define the foundation and the focus of their security program as being centralized on their firewall. And that's more of a legacy mindset, right? And it's it's something that I think a lot of the industry needs to grow beyond. And it speaks to a bigger problem, that idea that you know the foundation of the security program is going to be a tool or something that's going to fix, quote, the problem, right? And that's not necessarily going to solve the situation. Uh, we need to pivot beyond that to a more adaptive and operational approach and say, it's not the tool that's gonna solve the problem and it's not especially a single tool that's gonna solve the problem, but instead it's this adaptive approach and focusing on people and the uh, their experiences and their ability that's going to allow us to overcome some of these situations. And Kevin, I'd be curious your perspective on that same question. How would you say you characterize your security operations uh, at your organization and those you work with? Yeah, I'll build a little bit on what Christopher said because he captured it so well. It's really, to us, it's really about people, process, and technology. And it's all of those things. It's certainly not just about firewalls. You know, if you think about it, that that's kind of tied to legacy thinking, as Christopher said, around, you know, defending the perimeter of a network. And the reality is that I did an update to our board of directors a couple of years back and started with the chart that said, here's what it used to look like with a network and a perimeter. And here's what it is now, which is your perimeter is everywhere. <laughs> your data is everywhere. Your strategic partners who you integrate with are everywhere. And that's not a firewall problem solution. That just changes the landscape completely. So what we've done for our operations is migrated more toward a fusion center model. It's operations focused, but it pulls together with it threat intelligence and threat hunting and automation and engineering, right? Because the idea is you want to be a resilient organization, not just defend against the things that are happening. So you need to improve your speed. You need to improve the integration among your teams. And you need to leverage your talent because I think the people are the key piece. So that's how we've looked at the problem. Well, uh, you know, Chris, back to you, uh, breaking beyond that firewall centric mindset obviously requires a, a, a shift in overall uh, attitude and perspective and culture, right? So what, what are some of your recommendations uh, to leaders and those who have to speak to leaders for how they can be uh, more adaptive, more nimble, and really be thinking about uh, their operational approach, not just their technology approach? Yeah. So, you know, indulge me for a minute, but I'll, first you need to understand the problem. And uh, I like to kind of give this scenario that I know I've been in and a lot of people I spoke to have where you say, okay, I have a project that I want to do. Uh, a good example is I want to build a shed. So you go to a hardware store and you purchase all the material, the lumber, the screws, the, you know, the, the hammers and drills and everything. And then you get it back home and you go, oh, that's right. I don't know how to build a shed. So you have all these things and you don't know how to utilize them. And, you know, a lot of organizations are out there and they're buying all these tools, investing heavily in their technology stack and then going, 
I don't know how to use them. I don't have the people to use them correctly. <laughs> so think of your security posture as a pyramid and the foundation of that pyramid needs to be the people. And whether that's people that you hire internally or an external service, such as a managed service provider, an MDR solution, or a marriage of the two. And you build that strong foundation of your people. And then the next layer is to add the visibility and the technology on top of it. And then say, okay, now that I've got the people and I can allow those people to then utilize that technology and those tools, I go to the top of the pyramid, which is the processes. And how can I, again, marry them correctly together to get the best outcome from it? I'd also make the recommendation that anybody that's out there right now that's considering purchasing more tools, before you do that, step back and say, Am I utilizing the tools that I have efficiently first, or could I improve upon how I'm utilizing them? You know, could I get the people that I have or people that I could hire to utilize them more efficiently and then say, okay, now is there an area where I need to invest in? Is there a tool that would help or have I just utilized my tools effectively now to solve some of the problems that I had? Uh, so in some situations, throwing another tool into the mix is actually going to be detrimental because you're gonna get more noise and you're not gonna be utilize them effectively. So I would say, you know, start with that operational approach of, let me make sure I have the right people in place, then I can utilize the tools and then I can design my processes. Well, I think you would agree. There's some pretty complicated looking sheds out there and uh, <laughs> adding more tools just uh, complicates it further. Uh, Kevin, uh, talk to us a little about, you know, it's clear that effective security operations requires more than just plugging in technology solutions, as Chris indicated. Can, can you talk to us uh, about what is helping or hindering efforts to strengthen your security objectives and those of other organizations? Yeah, I'll start from the same place Chris did, which is to me and to us, talent's the most critical element, right? Tools don't, they don't know our business. They don't know our context if we can't tell it to them. You really need people, people who are skilled and people who are engaged to take all of the information, not just about your tools, but about risks and threats and your environment and your business, and then turn that into something actionable. And to me, that's always a people problem. That's why it's, it's kind of the base of everything to really understand the risks and impacts to your business, because that's what we're there to do is to help support the business. So then, you know, I see it that people then inter intersect with process and technology, and we start looking past, how do I just react to what's already happened? But how do I start looking ahead to what might happen? And how do you prepare for that? That's how you kind of go from being secure to being resilient, right? Anticipating those kind of things. You know, it reminds me of the, the, the Wayne Gretzky thing, the great hockey player about skating to where the puck is going to be, <laughs> right? You'd always be looking behind you or driving by looking in the rear view mirror, right? <laughs> um, and then lastly, to me, a really important fundamental piece is how do you get, how do you do routine things most efficiently? If you're spending all of your time just reacting to stuff, you're going to lose the chance to take your most scarce and critical resource, your people, and have them work on the most important stuff. So how do you how do you make that more routine? I think that's where you end up with the discussion about partners like Ar Arctic Wolf and others. Um, so you can free up your folks to do the things that only your folks can do. They know your business. They know your context. They know how to value and how to how to assess risk as it applies to your business. Well, that's a great jumping off point to uh, where I'd like to go next, which is how does working with an external service provider or partner uh, help uh, your organization elevate its security posture, uh, not just maybe do it faster? Yeah, there, there's, there's a couple aspects to it in my mind. First is just, and I kind of touched on this, scale and efficiency, right? If I can partner with someone who does this really, really well, then I don't have to do it. And that frees me up to do things that maybe only my team can do for ourselves. Um, this, they have, you know, partners like Arctic Wolf and others, as I said, have deep expertise and they have the capacity to kind of flex up or down as demands change. If there's a peak of something, I don't have more people to go find, but they do because they've got that. And then probably the other piece, which is, which is even more valuable in the long run is I only see what I see in my environment. We know what we know. You know, when you partner with strong, with strong folks, they see a lot of other people's environments so they can help make you better and smarter and faster. And those are all the three things I need to be able to do to, to continue to protect the organization to make it more resilient. Some great points. And um, Chris, back to you. Um, you know, so it sounds like having the right technology frameworks, uh, the right people and the right processes, and if they're all coming together, uh, you know, that lays the right foundation for creating a resilient security posture, not just being more secure. But can you highlight maybe some recommendations for tactical and maybe strategic actions that organizations can take 
to, um, you know, really, uh, you know, achieve this sort of true resiliency? Sure. So, you know, once you uh, achieve that foundation of your your people, whether it's hired internally or a service provider, then you can start to say, OK, am I getting the necessary visibility into my organization, into all the areas? This is a crucial piece. You will never be successful in your overall security posture if you do not have true visibility into all the aspects of your environment. Any area that is closed off to you, you can't see is a breeding ground for threats and potential problems in the future. So we always say, make sure that you're looking at every aspect of any area of your environment, whether that's the network, the cloud, the endpoints, everything that's being logged, the people, the behaviors, I can go on, but get visibility into all of that and then utilize all that data together to observe any potential threats or risks in your environment and build your processes from there. I would also say that security and your security posture needs to be uh, ever evolving. So we call it the security journey. We say security is a journey, it's not a destination. There is never a done point. There's never a point where you cross the finish line or plant a flag and say, good, I'm done, I can move on. Instead, you've reached a check mark, right? You've reached a checkpoint, and then you can utilize it as to say, okay, well now how do I further refine? How do I further enhance? And that mindset of saying, I'm always striving to achieve the next goal and the next area of improvement is something that's going to keep you a little bit safer and help continue to uh, minimize your risk, or as we say, put you on that path to ending cyber risk. Terrific, well said. And Kevin, just to wrap up then, uh, as you look at your journey, what, what's ahead for your organization? What are you looking to do next to continue to elevate your security resiliency? Yeah, the, the, the thing that, that I love about the space, I think that attracts folks to it and keeps them in it is that, you know, as, as, as Christopher pointed out, this is very dynamic, right? Things are constantly changing. So our focus is, um, you know, do we have the right technology, but to be nimble and we always be looking because the technology changes so fast, right? Tools have a role, but they're not all they're not all you do. And even bigger part to me is how do we continue to challenge the team members we have? How do we keep that talent? How do we continue to, to give them their opportunity to learn and grow and develop? And a big piece of that is freeing them up from some things so they can pick their heads up out of the battle day to day and look down the road toward what's coming. Because that's that's what's going to make us better and stronger, anticipating the future things that are coming at us, and that's what keeps them interested and engaged and challenged. So I always feel like I'm learning something new. So I think that's really where our focus is. And as Chris said, it's a little discouraging to know the work never ends. Mm -hmm. um, eight years is the CISO, and I guess I'm not done yet. But uh, <laughs> but that's also what makes it really interesting and fun and challenging. Absolutely. Well, Chris Fielder and Kevin Gowan, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your respective insights on how to make organizations more secure and more importantly, more resilient. So thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time.